That was a quick overview of, of the endocannabinoid system. And I think hopefully you see how important it is. Keeping your body in balance, keeping your body in homeostasis is really what the endocannabinoid system is trying to do and working in concert with your nervous system to do that. There are some questions that were submitted prior to this webinar, and I'd like to dive into those so we can answer those and really answer any of the questions that you have about this important subject. Let's run into the first one. Um, does marijuana use affect dopamine production? Uh, the answer is it can. Um, extended use of THC especially uh, can actually increase the amount of dopamine, dopamine production in your body uh, over, over an extended period of time. Again, not infrequently used, but um, if you are a regular user and a heavy user, cannabis can increase the amount of dopamine. Now, what does that mean? Dopamine is something that helps, again, it helps keep your body in, uh, in balance as well, but it'll cause things like ADHD. It'll cause things where you get stressed, you get hyper, those types of things will happen. Um, over a period of time, THC, like over uh, months and years, can actually affect the dopamine production and, and reduce it. What happens if that happens? Then you have certain areas where, for example, one of the famous uh, problems that people have is uh, Parkinson's, and this comes from low dopamine production. So the answer is extended use, heavy use of THC can. If you're using medical cannabis, Normally, on a regular basis, it probably will have very little effect on the dopamine production in your body and uh, probably won't really have, have much of an effect. I know in many cases, um, like, for example, I'm working with one patient right now that has Parkinson's disease. We actually have them on both can CBD and a dopamine product uh, and something that works very well with, uh, again, with the pharma drugs and things that are out there. Um, one of the other questions that comes up is... Um, is CBD like a vitamin where we're all deficient in it? Um, I would say that we're not necessarily deficient in it, but our body could probably use more of it. Uh, one of the things that happens is that our body produces these endocannabinoids. Those endocannabinoids then go to the part of the body that's being affected where you have a problem. So if you, if you're, if you, uh, uh, let's say, have pain in your knee, if you have uh, a digestion issue, your body knows that and it produces the endocannabinoids to really address that. Now, CBD especially works not only um, on various receptors, but also it works to reduce inflammation. So the answer is um, taking extra CBD, like taking extra vitamins, isn't going to hurt you. In fact, it's going to help you. And especially as you get older, like, for example, I'm a senior citizen, it really helps to have those vitamins, a.k.a. the CBD, in your body to be able to reduce the amount of inflammation, making it easier from the standpoint of your joints and your mobility, but also to be able to help with your overall health and and um, and your well-being. So the answer is yes. It, it I wouldn't say we're deficient in it, but I would say over over our time, especially with age, we don't produce as much as we really need, and we could be facing deficiencies on a, on a, on a on a uh, infrequent basis. Next question is, what CBD THC ratio should I get from a dispensary to help me with pain after spinal surgery? Um, I have herniated discs in my neck and in my back, and I've had knee surgery, so I'm, I, I can't relate exactly to spinal surgery. But I have to say, um, it really depends on you, and it really depends on what you're trying to treat, what relief you're looking for. Let me give you an example. CBD is great to be able to treat uh, the inflammation and pain coming from inflammation. THC is great to help reduce the amount of pain. It also helps to reduce um, some inflammation, but it also helps the overall health and healing of the body. That, that's really important, especially after surgery. My suggestion is prior to surgery, typically a month or two prior to surgery, start with a one-to-one -one ratio product. It's a tincture oil. Put it under your tongue, start with like a quarter of an eyedropper, and then go through a dosing regime. And if you're wondering what that is, check out our YouTube channel. We have uh, webinars on dosing. I suggest you use, try some product for a day or two, and then see if you're getting any relief. Then increase that to maybe instead of a quarter of an eyedropper to a half an eyedropper, and then maybe three quarters of an eyedropper. At some point, you're going to begin to feel the relief that's there. And then once you begin to feel that relief, if you continue to increase the amount of product that you're taking, that one-to-one -one product, you begin to not feel as well. Your your body will tell you that you, you, you'll know that you're not just feeling as well as you were if you took less of it. So uh, step back, 
take less of it, go back to the go back to the amount that you were taking. It'll probably help you feel a lot better. Once you get there, you can increase the amount of CBD. In other words, you can have a higher ratio of CBD to THC to see if that helps you with, especially with the inflammation in your body from the surgery. Um, I have used a product that is uh, typically a four to one, four CBD to one THC. I've used that post-surgery, meaning like a year after my surgery. But right after my surgery, I used the opposite of that. I used a one to four, one CBD to four THC. Why is that? Because I wanted to control my inflammation, but after the surgery, I had pain. So every person's body is different. It's important that you go through a dosing regime, find out what your sweet spot is. Once you know that, then you can be able to go from there. Cannabis, like coffee, like uh, alcohol, is really personalized. And really, there's no answer of what is exact for everyone. You really have to find out what your tolerance is to CBD, to THC, and then be able to adjust from there. And that's the beauty of cannabis, because it's something that once you dial it in and, and you get it right, um, you're in control. And that's really, really important. Next question is, how, how important is the entourage effect? How much of the benefit of whole plant cannabis do you lose when one or more parts of these cannabinoids, terpenes, flavonoids, a problem? I think what they mean is, is missing. The entourage effect is really, really important. Um, THC will help with pain. Uh, CBD will help with inflammation. When you put them together, one and one is really three. It really helps you be able to address. Um, it, it almost puts them on, uh, it puts it like supercharges them, puts them on steroids type of thing. In other words, it makes it much stronger, gives you a better effect. Now, whole plant cannabis is what I recommend because you're getting all the terpenes, you're getting all the, the flavonoids and, and um uh, uh, cannabinoids that you're really looking for. Now, if you use a product that is not a whole plant product, you're obviously going to be used not getting all the effects of cannabis, but what you're really looking for is what is the terpene profile that you need to address your particular situation? I think it's key to understand which terpenes address your situation, whether it's pain, whether that's arthritis, whether that's um, anxiety and stress, whether it's PTS, once you understand the terpenes that'll help you in that particular area, then it, cannabis can be effective for you. If you have a whole plant product, you don't have to worry about it because they're all there. But if you start to use um, specific products, pay attention to the terpene profiles that are there. Who can help you with that? Talk to your dispensary. Talk to your medical cannabis doctor. They'll turn you on to or point you in the direction of the cannabinoids and the terpenes and the flavonoids, candidly, but mainly the cannabinoids and terpenes that can help you that's really there. Answer is yes, you want the entourage effect. You want that that combination of CBD and THC to work together to really boost the benefits of cannabis to help you get the relief that you're looking for. I hope that answers that question. Uh, there's a quote um, that says uh, from Harvard uh, Health Publishing, what is meant by hijacking the ancient cellular machinery? Um, I actually have, have found that quote. Uh, oh, there it is, right. Um, the answer is that when you're using, for example, um, uh, cannabis, the receptors that you have will actually stimulate um, it, it will actually stimulate your body to provide an effect that's there. What it's meaning that is if you don't use cannabis at all, you'll have some sort of an effect. It, it could be pain, it could be inflammation, um, it, it could be uh, you know the, your arthritis, it could be anxiety. When you actually introduce, uh, CB, CB1, CB2, and, and can cannabis, what you're doing is you're putting in the medicine that it needs to be able to address that particular system and put your, set, your, your, your body back in homeostasis. And then you say the word you're, at, you're hijacking, what it really means is that you're influencing your cellular system in your body, which is exactly what you want to do. You want to be able to go in and work with the receptors to put them back into homeostasis to give you the relief that you're looking for. Um, I, I think they, they, the word hijacking kind of maybe gives it a little bit of a negative, but what they're really talking about is your body working with the cannabinoids to provide the relief that you're really looking for. I think that's what they mean by that particular, by that particular sentence that's really there. Um, next sentence is, are the CB1 and CB2 receptors also, opi also opioid and other product, other drug receptors? If not, what's the difference? And are they working on the blocky, blocker already like... Um, Naloxone, naloxone, I'm sorry, I pronounced that incorrectly. Let's make something very clear. Cannabis works on the CB1 and CB2 receptors. It does address the pain 
the, 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 if you take a look at the pain receptors in your body, the, 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 you're, you're, you're actually going to be able to so take a look at the TRPV1, TRPA1. It works with those particular receptors to reduce the amount of pain and, it, and to reduce the amount of inflammation. Now, opioids work on these receptors as well. However, opioids also affect the receptors that control your breathing and, and your actually your system to be able to capability to be able to swallow and the capability to be able to breathe. People that die from opioid overdoses fundamentally have breathing problems. They suffocate is the best way of putting it. Cannabis does not touch and does not regulate those receptors, meaning you won't have that problem. It'll treat the pain, which is what you want, without the negative side effects of potentially causing death, best way of putting it. So the answer is, yes, CB1, uh, cannabis can, in fact, help with pain, but it doesn't have that negative side effect because, again, it's not, re it's not addressing those receptors that have to do with your breathing and with also with your ability to swallow and to be able to uh, control that part of that your, that your part of your body. One of the other questions that does, has come up, I guess it's going to come up pretty quick, is is, CB, is CBD, in essence, is it a super vitamin? And the answer is yes, it is, because it not only works with your CB1 and CB2 receptors, but which is your immune system, your peripheral organs, um, inflammation, for example, but also it, you notice the receptors that are here, it's your serotonin receptors, which is your blood flow, your breathing. It helps you with your A2A receptors, meaning inflammation, coronary in, in circulation. It helps you with pain, which is also related to your body temperature and also your blood pressure. So the answer is CBD is actually a super vitamin. Uh, if you look at it that way, the definition of vitamin being something that works with your body to be able to simulate and provide positive relief that you're looking for in certain areas that are there. So the answer is, um, yes, the CBD is a super vitamin. It is something that can really help you. By the way, so is THC, but really it works together naturally with your body. The nice part about cannabis is the CB1 and CB2 receptors normally work with your natural endocannabinoid system that your body produces. In this particular case, if you don't produce enough of the uh, endocannabinoids, for example, as a senior citizen, I'm not producing as many as I did when I was in my 20s and my 30s, I may need additional um, uh, endocannabinoids to reduce the inflammation, for example, uh, to reduce to, to be able to handle pain, to be able to handle, uh, for example, if I get arthrit arthritis in my joints or things like that. This will actually help supplement and produce a little the, the amount of endocannabinoids that my body needs to be able to make, keep myself in homeostasis. So the answer is yes. The CBD is a super vitamin and it can really help you with it in a lot of different ways. And that's really the beauty of cannabis is that the nice part about the endocannabinoid system is your body knows where you have a problem. It, it doesn't need a doctor to tell you. Your, your nervous system will tell you, Houston, we have a problem. Pass it over to the endocannabinoid system. The endocannabinoid system will say, okay, what, re what, what resources do I have to address it? And then it'll go in and produce the endocannabinoids to be able to do that. And it does that by taking the uh, taking the uh, cannabinoid, endocannabinoids, the phytocannabinoids out of your fatty acids. So the, the issue is um, help your body be able to address itself and be able to move forward by being able to supplement yourself with the endocannabinoids that are there. Um, so I have one question that came in and says, are there interactions with cannabis in some prescription drugs? The answer is mainly... Cannabis doesn't really interact and doesn't really block or influence uh, most prescription drugs, except when it comes to drugs that have to do with the heart or blood flow. And that's because the endocannabinoid system moves your endocannabinoids through your bloodstream. And so you have to be extremely careful if you are uh, have a heart condition or you're on heart medication. Now, that doesn't mean that uh, cannabis can't be used. And in many cases, some doctors recommend the use of cannabis when you have certain heart conditions but it means that you have to pay attention to the amount of prescription drug you're using, and you have to then also pay attention to um, the amount of cannabis that you're working with. I know I've worked with a couple of patients, I've worked with four or five patients that have heart conditions, and we work with the doctors, the cannabis practitioner, to provide the formula, to provide the how much the prescription that you take to be able to help you. So the answer is yes, it, it should not be a problem, but if you do have a heart condition, please pay attention and please get your doctor involved. That's really, really important. I would get my doctor involved anyway, but especially if you have a heart condition that's out there. Um, second, next question that came in is, is um, I just got, it says, just got out of the hospital with liver cancer. 
and they removed half of my liver. Um, what is good for pain? A, a, a product that has THC in it is the best way of putting it. Um, first of all, I'm sorry that you're, you're suffering with cancer. Cancer is something that's serious. Uh, we did a webinar a couple of weeks ago on cancer. You can see it in our YouTube library. Please feel free to take a look at it. It might enlighten you as how cannabis can help with um, with with uh, uh, cancer. Uh, but the pain that comes from this is something you're going to really want to address. I would suggest that you take a look at a product that is higher. In, it, it, it's, it's, at least start with, if you've never used cannabis before, start with a one-to-one -one ratio. I, I recommend that. Find out what your tolerance is to THC. If you are having more pain, you can increase either the amount of product that you're taking, meaning instead of a quarter of an eyedropper to a half an eyedropper to maybe even a whole eyedropper, if you're using tincture oil, for example. Or um, the other is to use a ratio product where you're higher in THC than CBD. After my knee surgery, I had knee replacement surgery, I used a four, I used a one to four, one CBD to four THC. I found that that was very effective because that high THC was able to address my pain, but because I had the CBD in there, I had the entourage effect and it helped reduce the amount of inflammation and reducing that inflammation also reduced a lot of pain. So the answer is, I hope that helps a little bit. There is no real formula. As I mentioned earlier, every person is different and they have they have a different metabolism. You're gonna have to find out what your tolerance is, but the general rule is, especially for pain, lean towards higher ratio of THC to CBD but make sure that you have a tolerance for THC before you jump into that particular area. I hope that helps a little bit in that particular area. Um, Jim asked the questions, uh, do you know about mandanine and the neuroreceptors affected by cannabis? Uh, the answer is yes. Um, and I'm trying to figure out what you want to know about that. Um, uh, 82, it's called 82, is the, um, the mandanine. And it actually is considered to be like CB1 and CB2, one of the main receptors that we really want to take a look at. It's one that's getting researched quite a bit. It one that helps with a number of different situations, uh, especially in the case of pain. Uh, you may want to take a look at that. Um, I don't know exactly what you'd want me to answer. The answers that I know about it. There's a lot of different aspects to it. I'd be more than happy to answer any specific questions you might have about it. Please email me or let me know, and I'll be able to really answer that question fully. But the answer is um, 82, A, A2A is really important part of the, your, your system, your receptors, and cannabis does, in fact, influence, um, it does, in fact, influence that particular receptor. This is kind of a quick webinar tonight. I know we're trying to get down and really answer questions that you might have on the endocannabinoid system and on cannabis in general. Please join us next week when we're going to be talking about how you get started with it, with cannabis and the different components of it. And uh, more importantly, we hope that this webinar has helped you understand a little bit about how your body stays in balance using cannabis. Thank you very much for joining us and have a good evening.